Snow Tracks is sponsored by Ski Do Snowmobiles, Yamaha revs your heart, MBRP Performance Exhaust built for the victory lap, and by iPone Lubricants, exclusively distributed by Parts Canada. I have to admit, the crossover marketplace is frustrating to me. So many of the sleds being called crossovers are anything but. Still, if you sift through all the almost mountain sleds and longer track trail sleds, you can find a few that truly embody what a crossover is supposed to be. A sled that is as good on the trail as it is off and vice versa. It's no secret that for many years, we felt the only sled that truly fit the description of a crossover was Polaris's Assault 144. In recent years though, Arctic Cat gave them a serious run for their money with the Riot. In 2021 though, Polaris hit back with the best assault ever, a 146 in the Matrix chassis with a full set of Walker Velocity shocks and the industry-leading Ride Command 7S display. This sled quickly became the new benchmark for what a crossover should be. And while I have almost nothing negative to say about that sled, it did come with one caveat. It only came as the full jam package with all the goodies. You got to choose a 650 or 850 power plant. That was it. All the other boxes were pre-checked. For 2022, Polaris has redefined its crossover lineup. Instead of calling them assaults, anything in the crossover category is now called a switchback. This season, the switchback is only available in the Matrix chassis with a 146 inch sneaker and 650 or 850 engine options. For 2022, there's more than one trim level. Under the Starfire early season only heading, you'll find the switchback assault, but available all season long is the new switchback XC. This is a switchback XC. And if you're thinking to yourself, man, that thing looks really familiar, it's because it does. Let's not mix words here. The Assault and XC versions of the Switchback are 95% exactly the same. The only real technical differences are the shock package and the gauge. So the question of course is simply this, what's the difference and why would I buy one over the other? Here's how Polaris is positioning these two sleds. The Switchback Assault is an early season only model aimed at the hardest core crossover buyers who demand the absolute best in suspension and technology. The XC is available for dealers to stock all season and is aimed at a less aggressive crossover rider, one who maybe spends a bit more time on the trail and who doesn't attack big bumps with a vengeance. One of the most important aspects of the Switchback in either flavor is this IGX-146 skid frame. This is Polaris's dedicated crossover skid. But unlike many in the industry, instead of creating a crossover skid aimed at off-trail capability, Polaris aimed the IGX at on-trail comfort and handling. It has tipped rails to help maintain quick on-trail handling and it rides great, but it's also uncoupled so it still maintains excellent off-trail manners. Of course, this is paired with Polaris's double-arm trailwood front end that offers impeccable on-trail handling and flawless ride characteristics while still maintaining excellent off-trail handling. Instead of the Walker Velocities, a set of Fox QS3s were fitted and offer easy and straightforward adjustability for changing conditions and riding scenarios. Moving around on the sled while carving the tight twisties could be described as effortless, but that's not really even accurate. The narrow seat tank area allows your body to float from side to side. You don't have to think about it. Just keep your eyes on the trail, hands on the bars, and go. These incredible handling traits carry over into off-trail riding as well, where you're standing and moving around from side to side, or trying to keep the sled on its side while you're side-hilling. The gauge on the Switchback XC is the more basic message center display. We talk a lot about the Ride Command 7S display because it's so impressive, but it's not an absolute necessity. The message center display still supports Polaris' smart warmer hand and thumb heaters, and it offers all the most important information in an easy to read format. The Switchback XC is designed to be a more real world crossover sled that caters to the large number of crossover riders who do spend more time on the trail than off. It is more comfortable on the trail without sacrificing any of its off-trail capabilities for those times when you do want to go out and explore new places. 
It forgoes some of the features that are, in truth, not necessities and in turn becomes more affordable, with a price tag $1,300 US less than the Assault. This also helps protect the Switchback Assault's limited Starfire status as an early season only model designed for the hardest core crossover buyer. So what is our bottom line on Polaris's 2022 Switchback Tech C? It is really simple. It's the perfect sled for people who spend most of their time on trail, but want an incredibly capable and fun sled for those times when they do venture into the unknown. Snow Tracks is sponsored by Hercules Tire. Ride at our strength. We're constantly getting asked to compare sleds, which one's faster, which one rides better, which one handles better. Sometimes it seems like that's all our viewers actually wanna know. So today, I'm gonna bring you one of the most requested comparisons in Snowtrax TV history. Polaris's Matrix XCR850 versus the Lynx Rave RE850. Get ready, cause this could get messy. Both sleds are full production units and both sleds have been tested on our home turf, so I'm 100% confident in the accuracy of my comparisons. The way I wanna do this is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna look at a number of important vehicle characteristics and see what kind of conditions and rider each is best suited for. Then at the end, I'm gonna give you my opinion on what kind of rider should be buying each of these sleds and what kind of rider shouldn't. Let's start with something familiar, power. Both of these sleds are powered by engines that we are very familiar with. Polaris's Patriot 50 is an incredibly well-rounded engine. It has an incredible bottom end, but is extremely smooth and has ultra linear power band. It rips when you pull the trigger, but it can be ridden all day at trail speeds without tiring you out. The 850 E-Tech also has excellent bottom end and it runs as smooth as a sewing machine, but its power band is much more abrupt. It pulls crazy hard when you squeeze the trigger, but it's less controllable and smooth at trail speeds. Now, some of this has to do with clutching for sure, but that all plays into the power package as a whole. In my opinion, the better of the two is the Patriot 850. It just provides smoother and more controllable power from engagement all the way to full shift. Next, let's talk about ergonomics. With sleds like these, you have to talk about both sit down and stand up ergos. Now it's no secret that our entire crew absolutely loves the ergonomic package of the Matrix platform, and it doesn't feel any different here on the XCR, even with the taller bar riser. The bars don't seem excessively or uncomfortably high for sit down riding, but they're at a near perfect height for stand up riding, at least for someone in the six foot range like me. Basically, there's no complaints here at all from anyone. The Lynx is simply put, the most comfortable BRP trail performance snowmobile on the snow. The ergonomics are absolutely excellent for sit down style riding. And while I find the bars to be just slightly too low for stand up riding for a guy my size, the rest of our crew finds the stand up riding ergonomics to be excellent as well. What's interesting is how the ergonomic traits that make the Matrix so comfortable are mirrored on the Lynx. From the taller seat to the narrower seat tank area to the aggressive grips, it's all very similar in design. Now, while ergonomics are definitely subjective and everyone has a different preference, every one of our test riders agreed that these sleds are easy to move around on and both fit and feel perfect while you're sitting or standing. The two areas of these sleds we get the most questions about are without question, ride and handling. And they're also the most interesting ones to make comparisons on because they're both very similar and yet very different at the same time. In terms of handling, the XCR handles every bit as good as the 2021 VR1. That is to say, they are, in the collective opinions of everyone here at Snow Tracks, the best handling sleds on the snow for any kind of sit-down style riding. Turn-in is consistent and predictable. Steering is light yet precise. The Matrix-based XCR is, as I've described it in the past, an incredibly easy sled to ride incredibly fast. Riding standing up is also excellent. The same characteristics that make sit-down riding work so well translate directly as soon as you stand up. It's also really easy to maneuver your body around on the sled while standing thanks to that extra narrow seat and tank area. Now the Rave is probably the most surprising handling sled I've ever ridden. Its uncoupled skid frame and playful skis in the air attitude suggest it shouldn't corner well at higher speeds, yet the exact opposite is true. This is the best handling BRP snowmobile they've made in a long time. Moving your weight forward on the seat helps keep the skis on the ground. Turn in is predictable and precise and steering is light. 
the whole sled feels very flickable. When you do want to get the skis up, just shift your weight back. If you're standing, simply lean your weight forward for cornering and back for wheelies. It's a sled that responds to rider inputs, which interestingly is exactly how the Polaris feels to ride. Now let's talk about suspension. This is where these two sleds differ the most. Obviously they're both suspended by double arms up front, but the Rave's PPS3 rear suspension and the XCR's Pro CC skid frame are very, very different. They both feature absolute top of the line shocks all the way around. The 46 millimeter KYB Kashima coated HLCR shocks on the links are high low speed compression and rebound adjustable as are the two inch Walker Evans WER Velocity high low shocks on the XCR. There simply aren't better factory spec shocks in the industry right now. Both of these sets of shocks feature a huge adjustment range on all settings, but they differ in one significant way. The base damping settings on the Rave are quite a bit stiffer than those found on the XCR. What this means is simply put, the XCR can be set up to ride much smoother than the Rave but the Rave can be set up to ride much stiffer than the XCR. This is true for both the front ski shocks and the rear skid shocks. How does this translate into real world scenarios? Well, again, it's quite simple. If you ride smooth and rough trails, but don't tend to pound the biggest moguls at like warp speed, the XCR will give you overall smoother ride characteristics than the Rave. But, if you're the kind of rider who likes to pound the biggest bumps as fast as possible, hit the biggest jumps, and basically just smash every mogul in sight, the Rave will give you the extra compression dampening you need. And this brings me to my final verdict. We need to answer the question, what type of riding scenarios and what type of riders are these two sleds best suited for? The XCR is basically a beefed up VR1. It offers all the performance, comfortable ergonomics, easy handling, and plush ride we've raved about with the VR1, but has been built stronger to handle the big hits and moguls. It's extremely versatile for just about any kind of rider. You can enjoy ultimate comfort all morning and smash moguls all afternoon. The Lynx, on the other hand, is the kind of sled that can handle the roughest terrain, the biggest moguls, and the biggest jumps without ever feeling overwhelmed. The suspension literally feels bottomless. It never leaves you feeling like you're out of control no matter how fast you ride it. It may lack that ultra smooth power delivery and plush ride you get with the XCR, but what it lacks in those things, it more than makes up for in ultimate big bump control. This is the sled for the guy who wants something composed and easy to handle when it's smooth, but something that stays in complete control, ditch banging at full throttle and when the bumps get extra big. Is one better than the other? Not in my opinion. I have both of them sitting outside my office right now and I have to flip a coin every time I go to ride. I love them both equally, but for very different reasons. You simply have to decide which one has the characteristics that best suit how you ride. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. You know, this season is pretty interesting. With all the supply chain shortages, that pre-studded track that you spring ordered on your sled probably didn't come installed on it. As for the aftermarket, it's proving to be near impossible to find one there as well. But don't worry, we've got some options for you. Maybe you're not comfortable with drilling holes through your track and installing studs. Maybe it's the added weight you prefer to not add. Or maybe you're just new to the sport and tackling a project like studying a track seems a little daunting. Well, I'm here to show you that all of these things can be overcome and you can still get increased traction with these cool twist screws from Woody's. Woody's offers the twist screws in a wide variety of applications from 13 millimeters all the way up to 33 millimeters with either a round button carbide head or a sharpened carbide point depending on your application. Right up front, let's address the obvious. When it comes to hard packed and icy conditions, a track without traction is dangerous. This is where Woody's twist screws comes to the rescue. Our 600 Sport MXZ is in need of some traction love, and so I'm going to show you just how easy it is to install twist screws. No drilling through the track, very little added weight, and if you can use a drill, you can do this job at home, in the driveway, or garage in just a matter of minutes. The Attack is the twist screw that you're going to use for a snowmobile track. Now the one that we're using today is 32 millimeters in length, and it works with lug heights up and above 1.25 inch. Now Woody's does also have attack applications for 0.75 to 1 inch lug tracks as well as 1 inch to 1.25 inch lug tracks. 
When used in harmony with the twist screw install tool, the process is pretty much what you'd expect. You're drilling screws into a rubber track. It's not hard, time consuming, or technical. The insert and removal tool grips the stud with authority and also doesn't harm the carbide tip, which on the 32 millimeter attack screw is the most pronounced of the twist screws to give your sled that added bit of traction, both for acceleration and stopping control. The tool also ensures that you sink that screw head into the rubber, and this means that the screw doesn't sit on top of the lug and flex against it under load. The screws are self-tapping and no pre-drilling is required. They're designed to stay in place with a coarse thread design. They've also been brutally torture tested by Woody's to ensure that they'll stay put year after year. It's also interesting to note that on some of the more unique tracks that don't allow conventional studding, like Skidoo's silent tracks, you can use Woody's twist screws. While twist screws are great for snowmobile tracks, the truth is they're designed for a wide variety of winter situations, some of those that you may never have even thought of. Out in the mountains, most folks never consider traction products. However, the twist screws in the mountain applications have shown great results with increased braking performance, as well as breaking through the snow's crust on two inch and deeper mountain track lugs. The proper twist screw for your application depends on the depth of the lug that you're putting the twist screw into. It also depends on the application for whether you want to use a sharpened carbide tip or a round carbide button end. For things like footwear, the button style end may be more beneficial so as not to tear up your floors with a product like the Grip It at 13 millimeters. Now stepping that up, say to your snowblower, like I have here, you want to get maximum traction and not have to outfit your snow removal rig with a tire chain setup. So going with a sharpened tip attack at your choice of 20 or 25 millimeter will give you a significant amount of grip and the beauty part is that you can easily remove them if you trade up for a different snowblower in the future. Now moving up to a more industrial application, the Boss 30 millimeter and Gripper 33 millimeter are beefy screws targeted at more industrial applications such as skid steers, backhoes, or farm tractors. But no matter what you're looking to use your twist screws in, Woody's has an application that allows you to increase traction quickly and easily. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris, Think Outside, the regions of Quebec by the sea. Discover our ride ideas. FXR Racing. Maximum versatility for all conditions. And by Arctic Cat Snowmobiles. Going fast is addictive. It just is. And it always has been. As kids, we would push our bikes to the top of the biggest hill just so we could coast down as fast as possible. When we got a bit older, we held our old beat up enticers and safaris wide open to see how fast they could go. When it came time to buy a car, an older Subaru WRX with 300,000 K was more attractive than a low kilometer late model sedan because it was faster, pulled harder and sounded better. There's no question we are speed freaks and probably suffering from a more than mild addiction but it's who we are and it's what we love and nothing's gonna change it. This is why a sled like Yamaha's SRX even exists. Now there are some who would argue that logically speaking, there's no reason to have a 180 plus horsepower snowmobile that can hit triple digits before it even gets to full throttle. If simply traversing over deep snow is the goal, then I would agree. There are much more reasonable ways to do it. Those ways are what I like to call boring. Look, you don't have to make any excuses to want or to own a Sidewinder. I get you. I'm a child of go-fast upbringing as well. Yamaha's SRX is undeniably fast. Some would claim it's the fastest production snowmobile ever. But here's an important question I intend to answer today. Is it more than that? Is the SRX more than just a fast snowmobile? The SRX is built on the same platform as all other Viper and Sidewinder models. It uses the same 137 inch coupled skid frame and ARCS AA arm front suspension. This means that in terms of ride quality and handling, it's every bit as good as any other three cylinder Yamaha, which is to say that it's really good. Since Yamaha introduced their new strike ski this past season, the handling of their sleds went from not great to excellent and ride quality has always been good. Improving the ride and handling of the SRX even further is its lowered suspension, which is achieved by softer rate springs in the back and dual rate springs up front, which are softer initially, but ramp up quickly. Lowered ride height, yes, decreased travel, no, which is smart and is why the SRX still rides so good. Of course, a Fox Zero IQS shock package helps in a big way. I found with IQS on its softest setting, the SRX rode great in the small to medium sized bumps. It did bottom once in a while on bigger stuff, but not in a harsh way at all. 
And if conditions ever deteriorate, it only takes a second to bump the compression up to medium or firm right from the left-hand switch cluster. The system works better than advertised. Does the SRX handle well? Yes, it does, really well. And this is thanks in part to its lowered ride height. A corner is extremely flat, but does a great job of weighting the outside ski for excellent bite. Despite the sled being heavier than most, especially up front, steering isn't overly heavy. With that said, I'm surprised to see that Yamaha isn't offering a version of the SRX with power steering. But what about trying to trail ride a sled with a 180 plus horsepower turbocharged engine under the hood? This is one of many things Yamaha has got really right with the SRX. Yes, there's more than 180 horsepower on tap, but the combination of excellent engine and clutch tuning result in a power plant that's easy to control and ride smooth on the trail. The power is not jumpy or jerky at all. It's simply a pleasant to ride power package. Ergonomically, I find the SRX to be very comfortable with one caveat. Around the Snowtrax office, we all agree that Viper and Sidewinder seats all have foam that's just slightly too soft. You sink too far down in. With firmer foam, it would go a long way. The handlebar position is very comfortable as well, but my knees tend to rub on the body panels pretty much all the time. It doesn't hurt or anything like that, it's just something you notice. A slightly revised panel shape could easily solve this. Is the SRX more than a snowmobile that just goes really, really fast? Yes, it definitely is. After spending considerable time on this one in all different types of conditions, I can confidently say that this is also a really great trail sled. It rides smooth, corners well, has controllable power, and is comfortable all markers of a great trail sled. The difference here is that when you do hit the lakes, you can blow past the 100 mile per hour mark with a simple squeeze of the trigger. 